Hello, I'm Tom Cooley, go-to-market manager for in-memory databases. Uh, I'm going to host a conversation today on in-memory caching and in particular optimizing and modernizing database architectures with Amazon Elastic Cache. I'd like to introduce Barry Morris. He's our guest of honor. He's general manager of in-memory and emerging databases at Amazon. Welcome, Barry. Hi, Tom. Uh, good to be here. Great. Could we start uh, by giving the viewers a little background about yourself and your current role to set a little context? Sure, yeah. Um, so, uh, so I am the, the GM of, of emerging and in-memory databases uh, in the AWS databases group. And we have responsibility for building and operating uh, these database services and, and a number of which, are, are in, including document DB, elastic hash, memory DB, time stream. Um, my background, just for, to, to give you a little bit of context, I've spent my, my, most of my career really building database companies and um, uh, including in memory database companies and relational database companies and so on. Um, and really just here, um, excited because the, the future of databases on the cloud is, is, is so exciting. There's so much that we can do in terms of, of, of cloud database management that um, that that was so hard to do in uh, on on the on-prem um, sort of uh, contrast and so uh, so yeah just very excited to be here and we're building these businesses and taking care of our customers. I I sort of when I hear you talking I sort of feel like in-memory caching is in a golden moment right. Um, on one hand, your engineers and others in the marketplace have made continuous improvements in reliability of in-memory and driving down the cost of in-memory. And on the other hand, you're describing what's sort of a, a rising demand for low latency and functionality in apps, right? Some would say exploding demand. Everyone wants things real time, super high throughput, tens of millions of hundreds of millions, simultaneous users. Yeah. And all that's very read dominated. So uh, am I exaggerating about a golden moment for in-memory caching or is that about? Oh. I, that's an interesting way to put it. Yes, it's um, it, it, we, it is the case that we've got more and more applications, which, by the way, are almost all very read dominated. And so looking to read data very, very fast. There is obviously a lot of writing going on as well, but it's a it's a relatively smaller amount. Um, and uh, and and the, the golden opportunity part of it is is rapid access, which we've been talking about. Part of it is and you're sort of you're, you're sort of touching on this is that these caches also are offloading work from the backend databases. Mm -hmm. And so um, what that means is that you don't have to have as expensive a backend database infrastructure. Um, and uh, the caches, by the way, because they're, they're, they're supplying the data so fast, they can handle vastly more um, accesses. And as you say, tens or hundreds of millions of queries per second. They can deliver. They can de deliver deliver the data in in, in sub sub millisecond, um, and so the second big thing there is also that is the cost reduction aspect to it, um, and 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 there's a third one as well, which is that um, these caches are much more resilient to spiky data, and so if you've got situations where it might be a big retail day or it might be whatever it is, a kind of a Super Bowl moment or something. And there's, and there's a lot of need for, 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 for lots more users to access lots more data much more quickly. Um, trying to handle that with a, with a traditional backend database system is very hard to do as compared to trying to do it with a cache. So I would, I would agree with your, with your view that, um, that really um, it's, a, it's a good time uh, uh, for, for caching and I, and I suppose one last comment, and I, and I did refer to this a couple of minutes ago, is that cloud changes our opportunity with caches. It's quite hard on-prem to introduce a cache uh, because you need all the expertise, you need a team to build it and to main, maintain it and run it and so forth. Um, adding a cache on the cloud is a relatively straightforward thing to do. The, 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 the systems exist. You add it. It's, it's a two-way door. If, it doesn't, if, it's, if you don't like it for some reason, you can take it away again, and it's really no big deal. Um, and so, so cloud also is part of why uh, it's, it's, it's the right time now to be thinking about caching in your systems. Fantastic. Um, maybe backing up one step. When I have conversations and I talk about caching, uh, first of all, it's been around a long time, 
it's, 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 it's not a new technology. And secondly, it seems to mean different things to different people. Now, there's different kinds of caches. And so just to sort of level set before we jump into uh, how we deployed in ElastiCache, um, what exactly is caching? And, and it, it, we've talked about how, what an important use case it is for in-memory, but yeah. what do you say to someone that says, all of my databases have a cache already inherently, um, why do I need something else to make my life more complicated? Yeah, so um, you're, you're right. Caches have been around for a long time. In fact, if you and I went to go and design a new microprocessor architecture, we'd be crazy to not include a cache. Uh, caches are things that are used uh, pervasively, and it's a standard design model for, for a lot of things. In the, in the context of databases, um, caching is something which, uh, which has uh, the, all the advantages we talked about before. Um, and, uh, and, and in essence, how it works is, uh, with, is, is that you, if you imagine when you do a query on a database, imagine taking the results of that query and keeping it in memory for next time. Um, so that if that query comes along again, you can get that same data out of, uh, out of memory rather than having to go to the database again. That's the general kind of concept uh, of, of these kinds of what we call look aside caches. Um, and, uh, and, and so it's, it's relatively simple. Um, it doesn't really change your application architecture in any fundamental way. Um, but it's like adding a turbocharger. You put this in, into an existing system. Um, it keeps a copy of the data and, uh, and it allows you to access it very fast next time. Perfect. Yeah. So summarizing that point of the, this point of the conversation, latency is incredibly important to people's business these days. Uh, some, some are calling latency the new outage and because slow performance immediately translates into lost revenue and a cash is a terrific way to address that. Yes, absolutely. I'd agree with all of that. And I, I would, I would note that, um, me, most of the, of the largest customers on, on, on AWS are using, uh, are using caching as part of their systems. Um, it's, a, it's used very pervasively for exactly the reasons you've said. So ElastiCache uh, is one of the most successful services at AWS and AWS has a lot of services. So first of all, congratulations, Barry. That's a, that's a great achievement. From your perspective, what are the reasons for the widespread adoption of ElastiCache? Um, yeah, so as you say, ElastiCache uh, really is, 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 is a, a managed service for both Redis and for Memcached. Um, and, uh, and, and it's got all the advantages of, of, of managed service, which is that you don't need to run your own kind of Redis uh, server, uh, we'll run it for you. Um, but there's a, a huge amount that goes beyond that, uh, which is that um, if you're wanting to run on, uh, to, to extend your cluster, to run on multiple machines, um, ElastiCache does that for you very naturally. We can, we can scale out to, to hundreds of machines uh, in, in a cluster. Uh, equally, if you're, if, if you're wanting to replicate the data to an, another availability zone so that we can fail over if there were a loss of, of a data center or something, um, it does that for you naturally. We've also invested hugely in, uh, incidentally, I should say, we, we, can, we also will run it for you multi-region. And so you could have the, the cache running both in US East and in Sao Paulo at the same time uh, with failover between them. Um, so it has, it has these kind of advanced enterprise features, um, it, but it does, it does other things that I think are, 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 are sort of very valuable uh, for customers that are running big caches. For example, um, it, it is able to do data tiering, which means that uh, effectively we, we, we can spill data to disk if, uh, if there's more data uh, than, 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 the, than the memory that you've allocated. And so you can, you can run very large um, databases on, on ElastiCache, petabyte class databases uh, that are in memory, even though some of the data is, uh, is, is, is really sitting on a, a high performance local disk rather than directly in memory. Um, and uh, we've done a lot of work on performance. Uh, we've done enhanced IO and we've done uh, multiplexed IO and a lot of things that, so that it's considerably faster than if you were to try and run it yourself. But the overall thing really is just the ease of use that someone can take it, uh, can, can fire it up very quickly and easily, uh, can, can implement a cache, can test it against their application. Usually that's going to give them the performance and the cost reduction that we've been describing. 
Um, if it doesn't or they don't like it for some other reason, they can always switch it off. Uh, so it's the ease of use that's been a big part of it. Yeah, I think that, that that's critical. That that's sort of like uh, just try it. Um, you know, we're not we're not asking customers to refactor all of their applications from scratch. We're not asking them to throw out their primary data stores. It it's a really good step forward to modernization and retrofitting, uh, to use your words that I've heard before, applications, but not completely rewriting them. So uh, why not try it? Um, you mentioned a while back uh, cost optimization, right? Uh, clearly, uh, many, if not most, of our customers today have cost optimization in top of mind. Uh, and, but when you think of the sort of visceral reaction to in-memory in that it's the Cadillac of storage technologies, it's all about speed and performance, uh, and it could be expensive, uh, but it's actually, I'd like to dispel that, all right? So can you share with us how Elastic sure. Mesh actually helps organizations save money? Sure. Yes. And I think, you know, first of all, just there's two, two sort of aspects to this. One is, is it, the more important one in a way is, is how Elastic Cash um, helps you to optimize uh, costs uh, for your application broadly. Um, but, uh, and the second is really that Elastic Cash uh, will also help you to, to, to cost optimize relative to a, a cash that you might run yourself. And let's talk about the first piece. Um, offloading, uh, offloading work from the backend database uh, to the cache um, is, is structurally a much less uh, sort of demanding thing to do and therefore a lower cost thing to do. You might say, well, then isn't, aren't you just translating that work to the cache? But the cache doesn't have to do the I.O. And that's where a lot of the cost comes from because it doesn't have that data sitting on, 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 on disk. Secondly, because the cache is, is, is dealing with each query in such a tiny fraction of a second, um, that, um, that in fact, it can handle very large numbers of queries with much lower capacity or, or, or much, 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 much smaller capacity um, uh, uh, systems. And so, uh, and so you end up reducing the overall costs um, significantly. So a lot of it comes from that. Um, a lot of it of, 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 the, of the cost reduction comes from the need to over-provision uh, large database systems. If, if if you do have workloads that are relatively spiky, you tend to you tend to then uh, provision the systems to handle something significantly above your average load, um, and that can be quite expensive. Uh, whereas again, with the cache, uh, you don't tend to ha have to do that because the cache has much more resilience to spikiness. So there's a there's there's a, there's a significant cost reduction typically uh, for customers and uh, and and we encourage really for almost any application for people to try it uh, and 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 to demonstrate it for themselves. As relates to the second part of the question, which is uh, re reducing costs for uh, for a cache, if you are running a cache of your own, um, the uh, you know to to get to the kinds of levels of availability. Um, and uh, a reliability and security and so forth that Elastic Cash can deliver. You really have to have um, the kinds of uh, uh, sort of e economies of scale that we're able to apply. And and, and so uh, so what we've got is is a system that's delivering four nines uh, availability um, with all of the failover capabilities that we've talked about and the security integration and so forth. Um, and running it uh, as, as a managed service, uh, which means that, for you, that means that for users of Elastic Cash, um, we're doing the undifferentiated heavy lifting. We're the ones that are running the system. You don't have to have those skills. You don't have to have those people spending that time doing that. And you sleep better at night because, uh, because we have the on-call folks to deal with anything that goes wrong. Great. Barry, uh, I could keep going, but we we're running out of time. So... In conclusion, is there anything uh, you'd like to uh, share with the viewers, a couple of bullet points that they should take away with them, uh, keep in the top of their mind before we conclude? Yeah, you know, I, I think that I, I would just focus on um, the, you know, in, in AWS, we're always looking to, to, to solve real, real world you know, challenges. And so we can talk all day about the, the, the fun of building these kinds of ultra high performance systems and so on. But what it fundamentally boils down to is, can you deliver um, a better data management experience for your, for your users 
um, uh, using these technologies. And, uh, and I think the main bullet point to take away is that the use of, 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 of in-memory caches and indeed a, 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 an in-memory database like MemoryDB um, is probably the most, the, the most effective way for you to get responsiveness in your applications and dealing with that kind of waiting challenge that we were talking about before, about getting the right data to the right place right now. Terrific. Uh, very fantastic conversation. Uh, I know I learned a lot today and I expect our viewers did also. Thanks for taking the time to provide your views on caching and Elasticash. Much appreciated. It's been fun. Thanks very much. Thank you.